Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Hello, this is the Hot Topic Show for 22. We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be juicy. It's time for Hot Topics, come on. So here's the problem. Hey, gr hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. So here's the problem. It's too soon for Brad Pitt's friends to be speaking on his behalf, oh. or her friends. But I don't think she has friends. <laughs> like I've never seen Angelina Jolie out with any girlfriends. Think about all the magazines that you read and, and all the stories that we tell here on Hot Topics. I I don't know who she's like. Who who is she friends with? Right? Even random girls, like you don't see her out with anybody, but you see her out. In the meantime, Brad had a fruitful friendship life before meeting her and then, you know, going on to have the affair behind Jennifer Aniston's back, ultimately <laughs> marrying her. But Melissa Etheridge is Brad's friend. <laughs> now, you know, um, Brad sang at, oh, excuse me. Melissa sang at Brad and, and um, Jennifer Aniston's wedding. Uh-huh, uh-huh, so she's invested. <laughs> well, so she's got this Sirius XM radio show, and on it, she slammed Angelina. Basically, she was saying, who are you to put the fu I wish I was listening that day. <laughs> you know, I love some Sirius XM radio. Sometimes like the women talking and stuff, it's all soothing. Like I like the moms. Do you ever listen to the moms? Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? Denise and um, Melissa. The moms. Do you listen to Jenny Hutt? Yes. Jenny McCarthy? Yes. Like I am all in. Dr. Laura? Yes. Even though she's batty, but I like to, I, I, <laughs> but I love batty. Anyway, so. Um, this Melissa has a show on the Sirius XM and she's on there, she's like, who are you, talking to um, Angelina, to put the father of your children um, out there like this? You know, saying that he might have a substance abuse, that he needs to see the kids only when supervised by a counselor, basically saying that he's no good, you know, basically. So um, what do I feel? I feel like, you know, when couples get together, that the friends always have to choose a side. You can't be friends with both. I don't wanna be friends with you if you're gonna be friends with him. That's how I am. There's something about that, like when I'm done, I'm done. He doesn't need to know that I just replaced animal print carpet with lavender carpet. <laughs> you tell him because you came to the house, you know, for a sit, a see and sip. You know, so now you know stuff. He doesn't need to know that I'm dating and that I'm in love, you know, my ex-husband. So you have to choose sides. And if you choose him, then I am definitely tapped out. I'm not gonna even fight with you. But this Melissa Etheridge, she and Brad were close uh, prior to, including the, um, remember there was one point where people thought that the um, father of Melissa and her ex-wife's baby was Brad Pitt. 
that's how close they were. But it's not Brad, it's a Crosby, Steele, and Nash. <laughs> pick a name, but from that group. It, pick a, it's one of them. A, a Nash, a Crosby? A Crosby, okay, oh, you know that. Oh, thank you for reporting then today. Thank, thank you, uh, co-host. Um, so Angelina's um, effort to destroy Brad's reputation is going to end up ultimately, in my opinion, destroying her. Because what is going to happen is, okay, Brad might look bad to a lot of people right now, and I don't feel sorry for Brad, because ultimately speaking, Brad, when you met this woman, you're the one who had the most to lose. Because you were the one who was married to Jennifer Aniston, the water lady, you know, <laughs> the moisturizing queen. Like, she's like an America's sweetheart. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you can't step on Bambi and think you're gonna get away with it, Brad. <laughs> and they say he's on the phone with his mom all the time you know, commiserating, which, you know, that's a natural thing. If you're a person, whether you're a man or a woman, you got your mom in your life, you know, you, you, I was on the phone last night with my mom for like an hour and a half. Hi, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to keep asking her, is daddy in the room? <laughs> Are we on speakerphone? I don't even like this conversation. And the more she would tell me no, and she's not gonna lie to me, the more she would say no, the more I'd feel like, ooh, I, I have a moment with her you know, to herself, and I love my, da hi daddy. <laughs> but you know, sometimes I just wanna talk to mommy and I don't want you to be in the, in the other room, in the room, I don't want you to be in the condo. <laughs> you know, I want you to be like out riding your bike or something. <laughs> so that I know that I'm talking to mommy and that the reaction is real. So Brad's on the phone talking to his mom and stuff and he could be friends with, oh, by the way, um, <laughs> hmm, hmm. <laughs> Melissa hasn't seen him in over 10 years <laughs> because because he chose this relationship right here with he and Angelina over a lot of his friendships, which people do that. I'm one of those people. You know, you know, sometimes, sometimes in the name of love, you gotta let go of things that used to make you comfortable and, and, and just get out there. But now, now that he's divorcing her and she still hasn't seen Brad, I think that Melissa, this would be the perfect opportunity to invite him like for dinner or something like that. And you guys go out and you just let him know, look bud, I'm here for you no matter what. But to put it out like on your radio show or some sort of social media is sharing too much. And George Clooney and the rest of you, who are friends with Brad, please don't get any ideas and start, you know, piping up and talking. You know, Brad is a grown man. He was grown when he got with her. He'll be grown when they get divorced. <laughs> and that's that. My outfit? Love, love the ankles. Oh, and the, yes, I know, I'm loving it. Thank you. You're holding on. Oh. Yes, Suzanne. And look, look at the pop of color. Yes, you pop the collar for a pop of color. Uh -huh. Thank you. Nice. I look very professional today. As opposed to other days. Yes. Where you dress like a whore. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Oh, Suzanne. Oh, Wendy. Everybody on Suzanne's side of the building is sick and I'm so mm -hmm. nervous to even stand in the same room. Exactly, don't touch her. <laughs> Everybody around here is coughing and clearing their throats, mm -hmm. except for me and my side of the room. Rambo, Norman, everybody else. So look, now I already told you Michelet's movie comes on October 15th on Lifetime, right? <laughs> but look. Keep that in mind, but add to it the new edition movie. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know what this movie's about. I don't know anybody in here except for um, <laughs> young Bashir, who you know he's from Empire. Uh huh. But that's kind of good. It, it's good like when they get actors in movies where we know the, the, the players. We don't want to get caught up in the acting. We want the, I don't know about you, I want the story. 
so the new edition movie is our hot clip of the day. Hit it! Man, how long have you been out there tonight? Three hours. Too long? So what, that leave us time for like two songs? And Johnny maybe one? Man, I'm sick of this <laughs> Go to the other side. I mean, okay. That's good because we see where Bobby Brown's ego was out of control and he stayed on stage. And I don't know which one of the members of the new edition that was who went out there, but maybe that was like Ronnie or you know one of the other ones. Listen, here's what I wanna see in this movie. It's a little late for my request because I know it's already done, but maybe, <laughs> maybe you can go back and reshoot. I wanna see the drug use. Oh yes, oh yes, I wanna see drug use. And I wanna see frequency of girls. Cause this is like a lesson for all of us, you know, how it all goes down. Yes. Okay, I wanna see how they made no money. <laughs> uh, oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Wendy. <laughs> and she was in college in Boston. And she went to Northeastern University and graduated, but her school was right behind, like the, uh, the projects were right there. Oh. Few of the members of New Edition from the projects right there. Oh. So we would know them on campus and, and around town and stuff. And the thing is, is that it, it's one thing, you know, to be in a group, but if all you have to show for it are, you know, a pair of sneakers <laughs> and a moped. <laughs> come on, this is back in the 80s, mopeds were big, come on. A moped, some sneakers, you know, and some mall jewelry then you've made no money, but you're so enamored by people, I guess, coddling you that you get ripped off easily. And I just wanna see the rip offishness of it all. Like, how did, <laughs> how did that go down? Anyway, this is going to be, I think, a pretty good movie. Um, it's called The New Edition Story. And it premieres January 24th on BET. Hoda, hoda, hoda. <laughs> How I wished you lived across the street from me. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, I have pretty decent work hours, you know what I'm saying, and so does she. So I'm thinking, we see each other at the mailboxes, and then say, come on over. You know, whatever. We sit, we have our wine, we talk about people. And then she puts on her slippers and goes right back across the street to her house. Like she's an easy, and you know she's a friend to our show. So, well, Hoda just announced on her show that she's moving in with her boyfriend, Joel, of three years. Now, Hoda is my age, she's 52, and I, you know, Hoda, I know you've been married before, but you don't have children, so there's no need to stay in touch with, you know, the old man, because you're under a new man now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I would just find it really weird sharing my space in a live-in situation with somebody over 50. Like, oh, me being over 50, no, there's nothing wrong with clapping. I, I feel like, you know, I already, you know, when you're 50 years old, or even 45, it's gotta be hard to share your space with people, unless he puts a ring on it, in which case you're stuck. <laughs> you know, now let me pull off the mask. But, so she and Joel, Joel is very wealthy. He's some sort of Wall Street hedge fund money guy, whatever. He's 58 years old, he's a financier, he's divorced, he's got one adult daughter, so there's no kids in the way of this relationship. It could be fun, but in that case, why wouldn't you just keep your separate apartments and either use your money and rent hotel rooms, because that's sexy, 
Oh, just for the sexiness of it. Or, you know, you know, he stays at your house or you stay at his house. But to live together, you bring your furniture, all of a sudden a picture of your mom is on my mantle? <laughs> Are you serious with this? There comes a time in everyone's life, a man and a woman, where you just, I think you get settled in your ways, not because you don't wanna share of yourself, but just because you know your limitations. For instance, if I was a single woman at, at our age, me and Hoda, and I was dating, I would do things totally different. Like I think I would always have maybe a light coat of makeup on. <laughs> just because, you know, he hasn't been with me through the golden years. You know, when I was young and doing it. You know? You know what I mean? Like, Kev gets what he gets and that's it. You know, that, that is it. You know, I've known you almost half my life. We've been married for 18 years. It, it, when I get home, it's, oh, how you doing? But if I was with a new guy, he wouldn't see, he wouldn't smell a fart. No, no, no like, no, no, but I'm, but I'm saying, because now you're older and things aren't the same. You know, that little scrub fresh face that you gave him when you were 28 is now 58, okay? It's not the same, you know? I might even sleep with a wig. I don't know, I just, I don't, I, I would spend more time probably trying to keep it cute and keep it together because this is not the man who I went through miscarriages and deaths and, you know, career climb. You know, when you go through stuff with somebody, that, that is the tide that binds you. But by the time you're 50 years old, I mean, there's still more stuff to go through, but a lot of the major stuff is way over there. <laughs> Well, Hoda, good luck moving in with Joel. Don't let him see you on the toilet. <laughs> oh, oh, madam, madam, madam in the second row with the red, uh, with the red um, blazer. You're, you look so dignified, but you were laughing right along with me or at me. <laughs> Welcome to our show. I'm glad that you're here. Are you having a nice time? Yes, thank Th you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know who Demi Lovato is? Yes. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. I'll explain. I'll make you care, okay? So Demi Lovato, has, she's another one with you know, this big mouth on the, the serious. G yip, yip, yapping, okay? So she's slamming Taylor Swift. Oh no, she wasn't on Sirius, I'm sorry. She was um, interviewed in Glamour Magazine. I happen to have seen it because I'm, I still happen to be one of those women who still reads Glamour Magazine. I, I like it. I mean, I know it's young. <laughs> but I read Cosmo Girl. I like Glamour. I like Teen Vogue. But I also read Good Housekeeping. You know, like the older mag, you know, I have, you have to read everything to stay informed so I can be prepared for you. So, so Demi Lovato's in the new Glamour magazine. She's also the beautiful cover girl. And she's inside criticizing Taylor's infamous girl squad saying that they don't have normal bodies and it's unrealistic of what people should look like. You know what, Demi? I'm Team Taylor with this. I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, hasn't this woman Taylor Swift been bashed enough? Yeah. I think. <laughs> you know, this is normal size for these girls, Demi. Everybody is not born thick or thickalicious or with a little meat on their bones or tall or whatever. There are some girls, like this is your squad. Okay, fine. <laughs> No, 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 that's fine. But I think that what you were doing is tall skinny shaming Taylor and her friends. Taylor is five feet, 11 inches tall, and her friends are beautiful. They happen to be thin. But you know, skinny shaming is something that I was taught by my good friend, Reg, who is the size of my pinky. 
and she used to cry about that like when we were schoolgirls. You know, Wendy, you know, you get called fat, but I get called skinny. And I used to do something that would hurt her feelings and I didn't realize I hurt her feelings because you know, when you're thicker, you don't think that thin girls, you know, you don't think that you all have feelings. But when, but when Reg, when Reg would walk and we were young girls, I would always go click, click, click. Cause to me, that was funny. That's her knees and her, and her bones like clicking together as she's walking. That's not very nice. I'm still friends with her. She's actually visiting in a few weeks and I can't wait. In conclusion, Demi, I think that skinny shaming is as hurtful as fat shaming. I don't know, would you guys agree? Yes. And, and you can't do that. Okay, and tall shaming is as hurtful as short shaming. Yes. And speaking of short, Kristen Chenoweth is here! Well, she's the shortest woman I know. And I love her personality, and she's here next. So grab a snack and come on back. How you doing? We've got lots more great videos for you. Just press here to watch the latest Juicy Hot Topics. Press here for celebrity interviews. Go behind the scenes with our after show, or simply subscribe and get them all. I love you for watching.